Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A state prosecutor in the criminal sexual conduct unit is now off the job because of his own alleged sexual misconduct. Metro Detroit's most dangerous stretches of highway. A new list revealing where the most crashes occur. A worker at an after school program is accused of sex crimes against a child and investigators believe there are more victims. An Ypsilanti man is facing felony first degree charges accused of sexually assaulting a 10 year old girl. Levi Gardner was in court today where local four learned he worked for an after school program at an elementary school and police fear he may have abused other children. Priya Mann live at Perry Elementary in Ypsilanti. How long was he inside that school Priya? Well, Devin, for the winter semester of 2019, now that information is coming from Eastern uh, EMU, and that information is coming from them because they run Bright Futures program here at Perry. Now, this is an after-school program that helps kids with math, with homework, with STEM, and that's why police fear there could be more victims here. You should not be around, be able to be around kids no more. He worked for an after school program at Perry Child Development Center. Now, Levi Gardner is facing multiple felonies accused of sexually assaulting a 10 year old girl. Uh, victim in this case relied, uh, Sources say he allegedly assaulted the girl multiple times in various locations between 2016 and 2017. That's because following the alleged abuse, Gardner began participating in EMU's Bright Futures program and would have had access to young children. Sources say the 20 year old worked for EMU's Bright Futures program at Perry Elementary in Ypsilanti for about a year. He did not have a criminal history and passed EMU's background checks, making it all the more frightening for parents. I'm going to go home and talk to my kids. And I think any other parent that kids go to Perry School should talk to their kids. Gardner will be back before a judge next week while police search for potential victims. It's going on everywhere around us and we can't be too careful, but we have to tell our kids and talk to our kids even younger now. Now, EMU says they did two comprehensive background checks and Levi passed them. They did release a statement. Let's read a portion of that. It says that the university had no knowledge of these allegations and it received no complaints about his work. He was always supervised when working on site. But again, if your child attended Perry Elementary, you should talk to them. It's Lanny Police fear there could be more victims out there. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Yeah. All right, Priya. Convicted sex offender Floyd Galloway Jr. is going to trial for the murder of Danielle Stislicki. With 15 witnesses taking the stand and 45 exhibits of evidence, the prosecution presented a detailed account of Galloway's activities in the days before and after Stislicki's disappearance in December of 2016. The prosecutors also worked to prove Galloway had a premeditated plan. Just because someone's body is not available, that does not mean that we cannot move forward for prosecution. This is a huge burden that he has to bear, and I think he is hopeful that uh, the right out outcome will come. No date for trial has been set yet. Early word is it could be months, maybe even up to a year. A prosecutor who's made his living trying sex offenders is accused of his own sexual wrongdoing. Assistant Attorney General Brian Colges quit his office after he admitted to an improper relationship. Rod Maloney live tonight in Lansing. Rod, uh, the Attorney General, Dana Nessel, not happy. Well, and can you blame her, Devin? I mean, Cole J, and that's how he pronounces his name, is from Birmingham. And it's a situation where he got his start uh, at the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office doing these criminal sexual uh, assault cases and then moved up here to Lansing a year ago. Bill Schutte hired him here in the office. And now he is looking at his own charges, perhaps criminal. He's also looking at problems with the Attorney Grievance Commission.
Assistant Attorney General Brian Kolaje sported a blue shirt and beard in court earlier this year. He'd just prosecuted the criminal sexual conduct case of Ian Elliott, the Central Michigan University student government president. He had pled no contest to assaulting two CMU co-eds and received one to 15 years in prison. Well, last Thursday, Michigan State Police told Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel that Kolaje started an intimate relationship with one of the two victims in that case that lasted from last April until last month. Nestle's reaction? To say that I am horrified, uh, to say that I'm disgusted, uh, it's really an understatement. Kolaje admitted to the relationship. Nestle reported the case to the Attorney Grievance Commission for ethical violations, and the Michigan State Police are investigating whether to charge him criminally. I have never before even heard of a situation like this. I have never heard uh, of a prosecutor involved in this kind of relationship with a victim on a case, much less uh, a victim on a sexual assault case. Nessel now says she's requiring all staffers to get training and will look to see if anyone else in her office knew about this improper relationship. Kolaje prosecuted a number of cases now that have been called into question, including the Elliott case. From our end, we are going to ensure the integrity of any convictions. And so now they're going to put this to another agency to get a prosecution, uh, or at least to take part in that other investigation. We're also hearing from Michigan State Police. They said they had nothing else to offer. Reporting live in Lansing, Rod Maloney, Local 4. You got it. All right, Rod. Well, summer's back, but uh, some storms could be too. Let's check in with Andrew tonight. He's in for Ben. Hey, Andrew. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Devin and Jason. Fortunately, we are drip dry for now, but as mentioned, yes, there is the risk of showers. A few scattered later this evening, mainly after 8, 9 o'clock this evening. you got a couple here off to our west. You can see up toward Big Rapids and Grand Rapids. I think some of these are going to scoot across the Saginaw Valley and into the Thumb within the next 1 to 3 hours. Then afterward, we could see a scattered shower or two right here in the city and in other parts of southeast Michigan, but widely scattered. There's a better chance of more widespread shower and thunderstorm activity for tomorrow. It's still very warm, it's still muggy out there. You can feel it when you step outside. 84 degrees over at Metro with a nice wind out of the south, keeping us warm as we go through this evening. But with this warmth and with this humidity, make sure that you're still hydrated and that folks are still cool. Plenty of folks coming downtown for baseball, other activities, whether it's going out to dinner, a show, or both. 84 in Ann Arbor, 84 over at City Airport, and it still feels like it's in the upper 80s. Is the heat on for tomorrow? We'll talk about that and the risk of those showers and storms coming up. The countdown is on. The Detroit Youth Choir takes the stage in two hours for the semifinal round of America's Got Talent. Our Kimberly Gill is live in Hollywood tonight. You've been following them every step of the way, Ken, and you, you got a chance to sit down with the guy who put them there with the golden buzzer. How did that go? Yeah, that's right. You're talking about Terry Cruz. Good evening to you, Jason. And undoubtedly, he is one of Detroit Youth Choir's biggest fans. As you said, I got an opportunity to sit down with him and talk to him about tonight's performance. And it's obvious his passion runs deep for this choir. Okay, so we'll start off with we're here to talk about the Detroit Youth Choir. Yes. This is your golden buzzer. Oh team. What do you think about them so far now oh. that they've made it this far? First of all, I'm beyond proud. They keep stepping it up and getting better and better. And you know what's happening and what I'm watching is that they're getting more confident. You know what I mean? At first, you, they, they just hope they do. You could see they were doing their best and they were amazing, but now they know they can do it. That, that, that golden buzzer moment, for, first of all, has gone viral. Did you think it would, that moment when you hit the golden buzzer for them, that it would get as many hits as it did? I would because it's a grown man crying. <laughs> Listen, you made a grown man cry, okay? I said, oh, Lord, because you got to understand, I was trying to hold it together. Uh, I This is my first year hosting AGT, and I said, oh, Lord, I can't fall apart on TV, but oh, I could not help it. Yeah. You were a part of the dress rehearsal. I don't know if you got a chance to hear or see what they're going to do. Can you give us a little hint? Oh, oh listen, we'll I, see? first of all, I know, it, listen, it's lie. I can't, I, I'm telling you they topped it. They, worst of all, first of all, last time I came out on stage and they performed, last time, the audience went nuts. They could not stop 
cheering. I had to move. I had to bust in because it's live. You know what I mean? Um, they're going to do the same thing again. I'm trying to tell you, they took it to a whole nother level. When I tell you the confidence, the, the skills, the choreography is insane. Get ready, America, Detroit, your people represent it. I'm trying to tell you, I can't wait to, for you guys to see it. Okay. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if uh, he will be able to keep it together tonight on the show, which airs at 8 o'clock. So, again, I'm live here on the wet red carpet behind the scenes. America's Got Talent. It's quiet here right now, but in the next two hours or so, it's going to be hopping. So be sure to watch uh, tonight and vote. And on Local 4 News tonight at 11, I will have reaction from the choir. And uh, we'll just see you guys then. Reporting live from Hollywood, Kimberly Gill, Local 4. All right, Kim, sounds great. We're all so Super thrilled and excited about that and we can't wait. We want to make sure you know how to vote in this. Uh, the biggest way you can support them uh, tonight is to cast your vote on the AGT app or online. If you're unsure how to do that, we have a great guide on how to do all of that at clickondetroit.com. Remember, you can vote up to 10 times using each method. Well, let's talk a little bit more now about uh, Fred McLeod. His passion for sports was equaled only by his passion for his family. Of course, this morning, if you're just joining us, we were all shocked and very sad to hear of his sudden passing at the age of 67. It's really hard to believe Fred was just calling a Lions preseason game just a couple of weeks ago. And of course, he's better known for recently being the TV play-by-play -play guy for the Cleveland Cavaliers. But before that, he spent many years here as a sports anchor at WDIV, and he made a lasting impression. It's just amazingly sad that this happened. And, you know, the thing about Fred was he was always a pro's pro. He was always prepared. He was always ready. A lot of people thought he was very intense and very focused, and he was. But he had a terrific sense of humor. He loved to laugh. He will be deeply, deeply missed by all of us here at Local 4. Really true. When the lights came on, he was all business, but you know, he could he goof around with the best of me. He had a great, yeah. great sense of humor. He was just he was just a prince of a guy to be around. And take time to be a good mentor to a lot of people that I've talked to today that yeah. really learned a ton, including myself. Yeah, yeah, which is really, really sweet. Coming up, by the way, in sports a little bit later, Bernie will be back. In fact, he's going to share one of his favorite Fred McLeod moments as we've all been sharing them with each other here, uh, not only around the building here today, but he also worked over at uh, Channel 2 mm -hmm. uh, for a while. I know a lot of people over there thinking about him and uh, it, all of these Cleveland Cavaliers fans are just uh, Twitter is awash with their memories of the way that he called yeah. us that spectacular championship game that was incredible and yeah. then just seeing LeBron James yeah. uh, that yeah. tweet just mentioning his family and how much he actually he touched him too really special yeah. he's gonna be missed and our hearts are going out to his wonderful wife Beth McLeod and his three children we'll be right back <laughs>